In the latest Micro Bedrock Edition update 1.21.120, Micro Bedrock switched from UWP to GDK. I'll start by explaining why this happened, what these changes are, as well as the consequences of these changes, because especially for the things that I show on this channel, such as clients, there are some things you should take note of. Let's start off with UWP, which Minecraft Bedrock Edition used to be. UWP stands for Universal Windows Platform, and basically it is a sandbox app model built for Windows 10 with the idea that the same apps could run on PC, Xbox, Android, etc. I'll get back to the sandbox bit a little more later, but basically the apps are incredibly restricted, only being allowed to write in very specific locations. It's good for security and consistency, but it's very hard to integrate into Windows. Windows. If you play Bedrock on PC, it just feels like a less PC app than Java Edition does. But now they switch to GDK, which is the game development kit. It's a more modern framework and it still allows apps to run on PC and Xbox. This is the same development kit as used for the Game Pass, and this actually allows for normal Windows behavior, so the app is now just a regular app instead of being as sandboxed as it was before. This is great for, among other things, performance. So really, UWP is old, GDK is newer, better, all that stuff. So the consequences of these changes? Well, first off, there's a lot of problems updating and a lot of people losing their worlds as well. Why? Well, most people weren't able to update without deleting their game. All files are now stored in a different location. The old ones were stored in the same place where all other UWP apps are, and the new files are actually in the same place as the Minecraft Java Edition folder, just in a folder called Minecraft Bedroom. So if you're deleting Minecraft to update, well then at least copy all the data from that folder to back up your worlds and it's as easy as pasting it back into the new location. You guys may know that I've made a lot of videos about Minecraft Bedrock Launcher. This allows you to downgrade Minecraft Bedrock Edition to play any version you want. There's a few other alternatives to this launcher as well. All of these are completely broken for 1.21.20 and will be for all GDK versions as well. So now Minecraft Bedrock Editions should always be played through the vanilla launcher. With that being said, the Bedrock Launcher I just showed you isn't a crack. You need to own Minecraft Bedrock Edition to use this. But all existing cracked methods, like M Centers, for example, probably a bunch of you have heard of that, they're all broken as well, which I guess is great for Minecraft. Now, following from the change to GDK, it should actually be a lot easier for Minecraft Bedrock to implement an actual modding system. Although, because of the scam place, it's probably not gonna happen. I also didn't really mention it earlier, but a part of the reason why I'm making this video is because of how this change just flew under the radar. There's not much about it in the general notes, and you can only find it if you scroll all the way down through the change logs, and then there's just this little tab right here. Now I'll finally get into this sandboxing and what this changes for Minecraft Bedrock Edition clients, like the one I show on this channel. First off, the updating to the new update is obviously going to take a little bit longer because of just some minor changes including stuff like file pods and actual GDK support for custom launchers, including the one that Flareal uses for example. For the rest though, the actual logic of the clients should still be the same. And this is where we get back to sandboxing, right? because stuff like hack clients are notorious for potentially containing malware. Previously, because of the UWP sandbox, the type of malware these clients could contain was very limited, like the worst they could do was log your IP address basically. And it would have been great if some of the people on this channel actually knew about that, because calling Horion out for ransomware, like it, it, it can't be. But now, because the sandbox got removed, we're actually gonna have to be a lot more careful. But first, what was the sandbox? Well, as I explained earlier, it could only actually write data within the local state folder over here, which contains all your data, including your worlds here. So sandboxes are very limiting, and in this case, that was a good thing because clients injected into the Minecraft process couldn't access random files stored on your PC. Basically, all these processes you have running have lists of files that they can read and or write or execute, and the only place where Minecraft Bedrock Edition could write was inside of that local state folder. Now, with the GDK, it can 
theoretically write anywhere. One of the biggest examples of sandboxing is the tabs within your browser. These things here are all sandboxed so that the JavaScript from one tab can start reading your passwords that are open in another tab. Imagine how dangerous it would be if every single tab could read and write data to every single other tab. Solution? Sandboxing, right? But Minecraft is no longer sandboxed, and really, apart from the clients, the no longer sandboxing is a good thing. So yeah, clients could now theoretically contain more advanced forms of malware. Of course, they're not exe executables, they're still DLL files you inject, so there are certain limitations, but we're gonna have to be a lot more careful. So actually, through my university, I have access to a free, unlimited, any.run account, where I will obviously check all of the files and stuff that I promote on this YouTube channel. Of course, many of the existing clients are just gonna continue to be safe. Our main cause for concern should be new clients, unknown clients that start popping up. Right now, there's just a lot more potential for them to be unsafe. Obviously, it doesn't mean they immediately will be, but yeah, for right now, that was basically that, I guess. Thank you ever so much for watching. Stay safe out there, and I definitely hope to see you all again in the next one. Bye-bye.